Hey, Ag Teacher Thoughts here. I thought I would give an update on what the greenhouse is looking like. This is getting to be quite a full place here. So this is kind of part of the, for the course for our little greenhouse. Um, when you've only got 200 square feet of space, it gets super crowded real quick. So all of these baskets have had their, their last uh, uh, pinch for the year. So we're getting ready to uh, sell the weekends of, of Mother's Day. Um, so that's about second week of May this year. So I've gone through and anything that was growing under another pot that's kind of stretched out or anything that was trailing really long, uh, went ahead and got cut. So um, that's gonna give me six weeks between my sale date and my last pinch. Um, so from here on out, the plants are just kind of on their own as far as shape. Uh, but these are are kind of where they are. Uh, most all of them, if you really look in here, you know, bottom of the pot is down here. Um, most all of the baskets are trailing below the bottom of the pot. It just really depends on um, where they were um, in the greenhouse. You know, some of them here are not quite there, but, you know, there's a pinch here that's forced this out. Uh, this one looks like he got missed, so he looks a little funky. Uh, not quite to my preference, but you know, like this one here, this one uh, here looks like a pretty decent basket. Um, some of you are going to look at these and say, um, you got six weeks to go and they're ready to sell now. Yeah, they are. So usually when you get into uh, second week of April, uh, when I was over in Oregon at our family's nursery, Second week of April is when we would begin selling. Here, we're not frost-free during April. We're still getting nightly frosts. So let's see if I can turn this way. See if it'll make it, make it a little bit better. So um, I run a little later on my baskets, which means they're going to get a few extra pinches and they're going to be a, a whole lot fuller. Um, it's also time that we get our vegetable crops in the ground. So what you're looking at here is all of our tomatoes. We've got our Romas. We've got uh, some Mariglobe. Um, it's a beefsteak, some more Romas. Um, we're in a big area where people like to can. So you got to have a lot of trays of Romas. And then we've got a few trays of, of peppers. The rest of the vegetables will come later. Um, I start them in here and then I put them in little cold frames outside where I put in a tiny like a milk room heater, a little box heater. Um, it's, it's how I'm expanding our space until we get our, our big 3,000 square foot greenhouse in. Um, so just kind of a, an update here. Uh, well, I can show you some of the blossoms. So this is our giant blue. Uh, this is the Indian Summer Improved. There's our purple verbena. I don't think I've got one of the red ones open yet. And then I think the first one I showed y'all was the pink vein. Um, yeah. So, you know, the weather is kind of a warm snap here outside. Uh, I turned the ventilation fan off so that you could hear me. It's kind of loud in here. Uh, I set the ventilation this time of year to about 70 degrees. Uh, that gives me the opportunity to get a little break from watering so they're not drying out with it getting 95, 100, 110 in here. But yeah, we're in the time of year where if you shut off that ventilation fan about an hour or so midday, it get to 110, 115 in here, uh, which is a little bit warm for what we're doing. It's going to make everything grow way too fast. Uh, but, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt the baskets if they got up to 110 or 115. Uh, the only thing that would hurt them is if we open this door to the shop or turn on the ventilation fan when it was 115. Um, if you cool down too quickly, the stoma on the leaves are open and the plant can go from a hydrated, fresh looking plant to looking like dried parsley in about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I've actually seen it happen in 15 minutes. They went from alive to dead in 15 minutes. So we don't make drastic temperature changes this time of year. Um, if we want to try to cool off the house, we crack a door and we, we make that temperature change 
uh, that transition to occur slowly and naturally rather than to just open the door and turn on the fan and let it cool down from 110 to 70 degrees in a half hour. That's really hard on plants. They'll, they'll die if you do that. So I've gone ahead and turned on the, the ventilation fan uh, to automatically kick on. So I'll turn it back on here in a moment, but it's gonna do that on its own now. Um, up until this point, we were fairly cool, but yeah, we, we got up to 67 uh, where I live, which is a, a few miles from here. So not bad for March getting to 67. And if you caught a glimpse of my feet in that shot earlier, yeah, I'm wearing shorts. So it's, uh, Hey, I, I consider it spring out here, even though it's not quite yet. Um, but anyway, I figured I'd give an update on the baskets. So this is how they're looking right now. Those are gorgeous. Uh, you know, most people would consider them ready for sale. My preference is they're not quite ready for sale. I'd like them to fill out a little bit more, uh, get some of these branches down. This one's a little mixed up with that verbena. Get him out of there, get him aimed down. Um, but he'll fall down and, and fill in that spot there. But other than that, that's how we're doing. Uh, when we get the new basket, it'll be much easier to get good shape on these. Um, I'd really like to see these three foot apart. And as you can see, they're all touching right now. But um, gives me the opportunity to sell 50 baskets uh, to my community, which is what they really want. They, they want these hanging baskets. Um, I just don't have any space to grow anymore. Uh, this year we're only actually selling 45 uh, because we are doing something else. Well, let me get in this way. And for those of you ag teachers that are running something, if you want to get your community involved and invested, uh, you might want to work at doing this. So these uh, are down here. I moved them out of the way of the ventilation fan. But these are planted up just the same as the larger baskets. There's the same plant material in them. Um, they got uh, pretty heavily pruned. Um, they won't get another pruning. They're just going to go straight like this. These are our city size baskets or municipal size baskets. Um, this, I would prefer that this was a number 10 uh, poly can. This is actually a number 15. But these cans were donated to us and free is a very good price. Uh, I think when I priced out the number 10 cans, they're about 20 bucks a piece. So we're going to run with these this year. Um, a number 10 poly is about the same diameter. It's just a little bit shorter, if I remember right. Um, so we can always drop a different can in the, the bank, uh, basket hangers next year. And our one of our welding classes is taken to making the hangers too. So we're going to have five of these baskets on our, our main street in town. Um, this summer so these are starting to trail really good they're branched really well but that's going to be one of the ways that we give back to our community uh, when you only have 45 baskets and people still want to enjoy them we're going to make sure we put some in an area where people can enjoy so I thought you'd like a little preview of our crowded greenhouse and uh, I'll talk to you more later so thanks for tuning in and catching up Egg teacher thoughts out.